In the context of rapidly changing labor market and evolving skills needs due to globalization, technological progress, demographic transformation, and climate change, the need for well-performing TVET is even greater to ensure smooth job transitions. This is especially critical as global youth unemployment stands at 16% in 2022, much higher than the overall unemployment rate. These averages mask large disparities across countries, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. My guest, Doluashi Olanio, is a notable executive coach, business strategist, and an experienced human capital professional. His over 15 years' experience in human capital development spans across learning and development, talent acceleration, talent management, and placement. Over the years, he has built a strong capacity in process, project, and people management, and has an impressive track record of working with leading brands across multiple countries, including the United States, Canada, the UK, and Africa. He joins me now as we rethink TVET in Nigeria as a lasting solution to unemployment. Many thanks for joining me, Tolu. Thank you so much for having me here, Justin. Well, it is my pleasure. Let's start this way. Just yesterday, you and I were just uh, having a pre-check concerning this. And as though the present administration has its eyes on TVET um, as a way of uh, maybe improving the unemployment situation in the country, it used to be like a thing in the past that uh, did we lose track somehow in any way? Well, yeah, I mean, so thanks, Justin. I think that we actually lost track um, at some point, right? Um, I mean, so TVET's vocational education used to be like a big deal. Um, so which was some of the things that give birth to um, organizations like NAPTEB, um, where you could easily, yeah, instead of going to a secondary school, you could go to a, a vocational and a technical school and could uh, graduates being like, um, I mean, it, someone who is skilled in a technical skill, and you can then get into the labor market mm -hmm. as such. Uh, but I think that um, uh, we then lost, I mean, which also strengthened like polytechnics and all, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but then I think somewhere along the line, we lost it. Maybe also for higher preference placed on university education, uh, we then make a lot more people clamor to, um, I mean, to gain university degrees, uh, which are scribing out put the university degree a bit above um, other technical um, um, institutions. Uh, I mean, yes, I think I think we we'll probably lost it at that point, um, which is um, also very sad and worrisome. Okay, but right now you will agree with me that uh, we are witnessing unprecedented inequalities uh, within uh, countries, especially when we talk about uh, women, uh, men, and of course uh, youth unemployment. But in your opinion, do you really think? Uh, you know, TVET is like a panacea to these issues of uprising unemployment, specifically amongst the youth. Well, yes. I mean, I absolutely would say yes, right? So TVET is the, uh, the pathway now, right? Um, is, is a strategic pathway into the fast rising rate of unemployment, right? So think about it this way. We have a whole lot of people who probably had studied a particular course in university and are yeah. looking to... to um, to practice or to earn a living based on what they have studied, right? But then you could flip it. We have shortage of well-experienced plumbers. Uh, we have um, shortage of, uh, of carpenters who can do this thing. Um, and we can even export the skills, right? But then we have a lot of people who just want to go the other route of looking for a white collar job. And like I say every time, the color, the color of the color of the job is gradually changing, you know, it's, not, it's fast changing, mm. right? And we then need to be able to then help build the technical vocational space so that it can accommodate a whole lot of people, right? Mm. Also build structures and systems in place to support um, artisans and their businesses, right? So it's very tough for you to see a, a tailoring um, outlet um, that has more than two branches, even in a state. Mm. So have, we seen, have you seen a mechanic workshop that has a, an outlet in Lagos and has in Ibadan and has in um, Shagamu or has in has almost everywhere, mm -hmm. right? So it means that because of the less attention paid to skilled labor, mm -hmm. um, we, they are not getting as much support is reducing their capacity to be able to absorb as much people, right? But then if you then put a lot of energy on building um, the TVET space, mm -hmm. so we'll, it will be a full value chain where we'll also be supporting like the SMEs who will be absorbing these people at the, at, and once they are done. So you mm -hmm. can see a mechanic workshop 
um, that's absorbing about three, four graduates, and they are all working. Um, I mean, they're all working well. Mm. Um, so this person has like branches in four other states. It means this mechanic business, who is hiring just two people now, has the potential of hiring twenty-two people mm. if strengthened and if adequate attention is placed okay. on this skill. Okay, let's talk. What more can be done to encourage MT that You talked about uh, in passing. You talked about how uh, there's a preference for. Uh, university education as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, uh, the monotechnics and the polytechnics. We also have the uh, NBTE, uh, yes. I was in NAPTE, yeah, NAPTE. NAPTE. Yeah. Okay, and all of that, but in your opinion, do you really think it is well positioned to you know, handle all of the issues uh, concerning uh, human capital development, vocational and technical education? Because back in the day, even as at the secondary level, we even have vocational training in schools. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. so um, so what I what I said when right, I said this are different for is we need a stronger legislation, right? That perfectly would equate um, and standardize all of the degrees across mm -hmm. board, right? So a university graduate is not earning more than a polytechnic graduate, right? Mm -hmm. So it makes it a clear alternative. Uh, for these people, um, there are some courses and some uh, there's some courses that people who are graduated from from uh, a technical school, or a technical um, secondary school, can probably not apply to um, in the university. Also, for for like basic disparity, but we need is a stronger legislation to equate and standardize all of this, right? And also, we need like a, a higher level of standardization, mm. right? Um, around it, I mean NSQ that's that is that we're currently having, um, which is like national skills framework, that says, oh, if you are done with, if you are done with um, an OND, right, you are probably at this skill level, okay. and you can be hired by a by a company on this level. Mm. Now OND graduates are largely just hired as as IT people. Oh, just come after they are done with IT. Uh, there's no strong standardization to say, oh, this is where you are. Mm. So you see a lot of them, instead of earning the skill and working on the role that they've been hired to, they are instead seeing themselves as not sufficient or oh, until I go get an HND mm -hmm. before I'm able to. Meanwhile, they could actually stay on the job mm. for another six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, not for another, sorry, maybe like another three years, yes. do a recertification exam, okay. and they can then say, oh, they've matched the standard of people mm. who are at, who will now have an HND because they now have um, OND plus three years work experience, mm. right? So now the challenge that we've been having over time is someone with OND and with three years work, work experience mm. is still seen as just an OND older. After all the experience that he After the three years experience, right? Mm. And the person with Oh, straight OND, mm. and then went for when you HND is seen as a higher yeah, degree older. With no experience per se. With no experience per se. So standard standardization is now a challenge mm. um, that we're that we're battling with. But if we can work around all of this, um, so the person takes a certif a, a recertification exam mm. or certification exam, recertification exam, and it is a continuous certification process mm. that helps us through um, through the experience path, right? Mm. It will then help a lot, a lot of people move from the unemployed space into mm. because a lot of people are currently unemployed now mm. because they feel OND is not enough. They don't have the finance to go for for HND, so they're just at home and they account for the high number of unemployed people that we have in the country. Okay, let's talk about uh, these uh, trainings per se because we know that TVET um, has a very high potential. Yeah. Over time, all we see is that we have pockets of. Uh, Companies or groups are, uh, you know, doing vocational trainings for people just to give them um, work skills and all of that. But sometimes, what we find out is that some of these uh, technical colleges that we have, they tend to teach what they think the people need, as opposed to the reality of what they actually need. So, how do we go around all of that? Oh, okay. So, so, like I, I always advocate it again, we need to do a proper synergy of the town and gown, hmm. right? Um, so the, the gown, which is like the, the institution, academic, the yeah, academic yeah. space, um, I mean, I, I think that the curriculum, like I've always said, mm. is a bit outdated. So there needs to be a proper synergy between the institutions and the workplace, mm. facing reality, understanding that, hey, this is the current market trend. This is the current market uh, expectation. I was on a panel last week. 
I know what the panelists were saying. He said there is only one institution that has an almost updated um, fashion or textile um, mm. design department or course almost updated mm. and that almost updated is about uh, maybe like 15 years ago oh wow right and there is there is an ongoing trend so i most likely would not hire a stylist mm. who has just graduated from that university mm. into my fashion company because i feel that this person is is, is out of touch right mm. oh but then i would hire this person this person had maybe gone to a school but i had then gone to a well-known fashion house to get trained so it means that we need to bring bridge the gap and put the institution and and um and um the workplace mm -hmm. together understanding oh, what are the needs in the in the, in the labor market mm -hmm. um what are like the requirements how can we bring town and gown together so all of the polytechnics all of the money techniques all of the institutions have professionals not academics not academics right professionals take specific courses that can help these people build better skills right so uh, my brand had just trained about, about the 100 people in traditional textile design right mm -hmm. i mean we've done this with a professional um we did not bother to ask what school did you graduate from mm -hmm. grad um participants and beneficiaries of this program which was like full, which was like um, free um now earn a minimum mm -hmm. of a hundred uh, of 70 to a hundred thousand mm -hmm. every month right mm -hmm. this is irrespective of what your academic background so emphasis is. emphasis should not really be on the paper qualification per se. Yes, right, yes. Mm. So this is, I mean, not not, not bordering because we take you through the, the, the full course of traditional textile design, mm. how to make adire, how to make batik, how to do like all of those things. And we walk you through, um, I mean, through the full length of business exposure, marketing, like digital marketing. So we want to be sure that you can run a full business, mm. right? And then we'd provide support to you and your employees mm. um, on a going concern. These are the, like, the things. And that's why um, institutions abroad have research grants mm. that, that I mean, allows them to do research and mm. people from, from industries can come tap into these researchers. I think that, um, I mean, our institutions also need to open up their doors uh, to a lot more professionals coming yeah, in to I, provide support. I was going to say that because uh, you in your own... Um, light can only just do so much uh, as yeah. an ego foundation and pockets of others that we have but then how do we uh, what can be done uh, to uh, uh, tackle the factors that um, affect performance of tvet specifically uh, access you know quality equity and relevance so i'll start i'll start with the last one yeah mm -hmm. relevance um i mean i can also ask how many people would agree for their children um after the secondary school um, to say that, um, oh, I think I think I, I wanted to go learn um, automobile. I would <laughs> 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 to go learn automobile repair, right? Yeah. So even from the home, right? A lot of people have not come to accept, uh, mm. not come to agree um, to um, to the TV. So we need to first um, increase awareness for the acceptance of this, um, which is like advocacy, and ensure that we make it as relevant as possible. People come to to take it right and then sec second is i mean while um we we're increasing relevance we're then also increasing acceptance right to say that all people can then um uh, i mean like take this in begin to accept it and then we those are like the foundation mm. that, that, that's like what we need that's like the foundation once that is out of the way people see it as a normal thing so you don't look down on the mechanic or that mm. who is a mechanic a lot of mechanics are they are like mechanics are very rich people mm. right um, i'm sure they earn maybe more than some of us who who, who work i mean inside nine to five, I know. yeah nine to mm. five right so yeah so i mean i think when we first um increase advocacy uh, i mean work around acceptance people um, accepting it ensure that it is as relevant as possible oh yeah so it then gives birth to or gives lead to all of the other conversations around mm. how to around because how to equity to, to ensure that uh, you know it actually fed to both um sexes as it is because oh yeah oh yeah so uh and, and i think that um so the conversation is getting bigger mm. um there's a, i mean there are lady mechanics everywhere now who do who i mean also on board just women to train them in these different skills, right? Um, and I, I, like I say, most times, women have a higher capacity to learn most of those skills and learn well. Mm -hmm. I think the, the challenge sometimes is access for mm -hmm. them, right? How are they able to access this? What kind of design, uh, what kind of structures have been designed to help them, 
mm-hmm. right to be able to so yeah because we know that oh they are also at home they need to do a few things um on, on the home front to, yeah. to support their families oh are we able to build like structures that allows that allows this so for most of our trainings we end at a particular time because we know that oh these women would say oh i want to go get my kids i mean we're in africa mm-hmm. um i mean the the women provide heavy support mm-hmm. to the home system so um so we, we sort of make room for that to allow them um, I mean, also be able to function well at home. Well, yes. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I, I think I think that the conversation is getting bigger for women, and women are beginning to embrace like use of these skills a whole lot more. All right, uh, my people are actually asking me to rush out of the studio, but I want to say a very big thank you to you, um, thank to you. Lua, um, um, or, uh, <laughs> to Lua Shiolani, You know, uh, to Lua Shiolani is the founder of uh, Ego Foundation, and his organization helps with them um, employability skills and of course uh, workplace skills so that Nigerian youths, women and of course everyone inclusive can actually have the skills to be honed so they can even be their own bosses over time. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you so much, Justin. All right. As we wrap up, stakeholders have called for effective regulation in the e-commerce space to ensure profitability and sustenance of active players. This formed the major thrust of this course at unveiling of an e-commerce platform, Okari Market Hub in Lagos. I'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.